Today's video is brought to you by Onyx Off-Road. If you'd like to explore the Washington backcountry discovery route, just go to ridebdr.com, download the GPX files for Washington. You can upload those into Onyx Off-Road and then boom, you've got a pre-downloaded guided map that will show you exactly how to go where you saw us go today. Onyx has a number of key features that I find extremely valuable when trying to navigate the outdoors quickly and easily. And if this is a software that you're interested in, then just use Dirt Lifestyle at checkout and save yourself an additional 20%. with all the planning and prepping, not every trip that you take is going to be the perfect trip. In fact, I'd argue that most trips aren't the perfect trip. In today's video, we're gonna learn firsthand that even with all of the preparation, all of the routine maintenance, and everything that I've put into this Land Rover, there's still a bunch of parts on here with over 200,000 miles, and no matter who makes it, nothing lasts forever. Today Dirt Lifestyle, we're doing the Washington BDR with my friend Edward Shin, Hello, my brother, one of our other friends. <laughs> we're gonna go up. We're gonna go up and see if we can get into some trouble. The Washington Backcountry Discovery Route is comprised of six sections going from Oregon all the way through Washington up into Canada. In this video, we're gonna navigate our way up section one from Oregon to Packwood. We're gonna take our time, so we're gonna span this out over two nights. We've got four people ready to camp. We're very excited. We don't know exactly where we're gonna camp yet, but we're gonna be realistic. We're probably gonna show up in the dark because all of us have left for a trip on Friday after work and you almost always show up in the dark. And we're really flexible about whatever we find. So we're gonna drive through the night. There's no reason to stop early and settle. We just wanna find something that we think is gonna be a great view when we wake up and flat enough that we can set up camp without rolling all over the place. Campsite we found sandwiched just right in between Mount Adams and Mount Hood. It was pretty much any direction you look was absolutely breathtaking. This first section of the Washington BDR is so thick with trees that it's actually kind of hard to find viewpoints like this. And so when we woke up and we were looking right at Mount Hood, we were extremely thankful. It was a slow morning, which was wonderful, but after a while, it was time to make some breakfast. Good morning, folks. We're on trail on location and it is beautiful out here. So I don't normally do this, but um, I want to do like a walk with, uh, you know, I've got four rigs here. I want to do like a little walk at everyone's camp because I've been asked to do that multiple times when I do these videos and I never do. This trip is full of variety. We've got a home built Toyota. This is uh, my brother's coworker who's out here with us. And this thing is pretty sweet. Front and rear lockers. The uh, 22R is pretty built. So he had no problem keeping up with us on the highway. And the setup's nice. He built a canopy back there and it uh, gave him a perfect place to put that rooftop tent. And you guys know this one, my old Land Rover, still kicking. This isn't exactly level ground, but once you put some rocks under your tires, <laughs> we're able to level it out pretty good and then able to soak up the rest with the rear airbags. But um, here's our little fire spot, common area. Not a bad view, could be worse. My brother's staying in the gazelle tent. What do you think, Matt? What'd you, did you enjoy the tent? I did. did yeah. The only thing better than... Stand up in it. Yeah, right? Which he, never happens. The only thing better than the gazelle tent is the view you get when you open up yeah. the door to the gazelle open tent. Door, it is. Mr. Edward, tell us about your truck, sir. How's it going? Um, 
This is my 2021 Ram Rebel. I bought it specifically to go overlanding, car camping and stuff like that. I uh, wanted to build it up so it's definitely capable and comfortable so that we can enjoy the outdoors. Uh, so I guess, welcome to my crib, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is my kitchen <laughs> and uh, my bed, bedroom basically. And this tent was a tent that I got mainly for solo trips because my wife and I, we have a baby now. So for that, we're thinking about a different setup, like a big ground tent or maybe even a trailer with the rooftop tent on it. But yeah, this just setting it up so it's convenient. But for you solo, know. yeah, you just push the roof up and you're pretty much done. Yeah, and I think one big part of uh, being able to enjoy this kind of setup is organization as well. Just so that, you know, you're able to get to what you want when you get up and set up camp. Because I think saving the time to do all this stuff in order to enjoy views like this is important. So, I mean, like even on the side here, I got like a lightning rack with the pod and I kind of have things separated out over here. Like um, like tool bag, food bag, first aid, things like that. <laughs> that is super cool. So yeah, before when I had my other truck, I had just things in bags in the cab and everything like that. And I would just kind of try to search for it. I'm a organized mess type of person sometimes. So, but this definitely helps. So um, that's the... That's the rig though. I mean, there's so much stuff that uh, oh, yeah. went into this. It, it looks awesome. I love the wrap. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, that was one of the first things I did because I know that I'd want to take this out into the forest. And I pinstriping is common for me. As you can see, there's already some stripes going on here now. <laughs> yeah. And save the black paint on this thing. There you go. But um, yeah, there's still, I still have yet to reach. I did my first oil change recently, my 5,000 mile oil change. Brand and, new uh, truck. Brand new, man. So um, I bought the truck just to go out and do this kind of stuff, not to preserve it and park it at a mall somewhere. And so, here we are. Yeah, here we are. And we lucked out at this spot, man. We came in at the night. Yeah, not bad for doing this like in the dark. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> man. The final rig, you might recognize this used to be my wife's Liberty. Um, and now it's my brother's Liberty. And we are doing a build on the channel. I got half the build filmed with mounting like wheels, tires, uh, lift kit and stuff, but we're waiting on a whole bunch of parts to do the roof rack. And we've been, so we've been waiting since April and it's September. So once that stuff comes in, I'm gonna finish that video and you guys are gonna see me build this Liberty finally on the channel. Uh, it's gonna be sweet when it's all said and done. I just wanna try to do the whole build in one video. So that stuff's coming. After we had a little bit of breakfast, we made this a late morning. And I mean, a real late morning. We just sat around, we enjoyed each other's company, had some conversation and really soaked in these views. This is probably going to be the last good weather we're gonna get for any of the trips we plan all year. And so we're soaking in every single moment that we can. But before long, it was time to box everything back up and get back on the trail. Just barely off a of section one of the WABDR is a tourist destination called the Guler Ice Caves. And this is something that I did not anticipate until we came across it. Suggested safety items. Hard hat, check. Light, check. Suitable footwear. Well, I've got my $3 hiking shoes. It's relative. <laughs> and warm clothing, check. We got shorts, shorts, and... Yeah. Uh, it works. It's fall for sure. Yeah. Apparently the amount of ice in this cave fluctuates wildly. So this is the end of the summer. It's pretty dry and it is ice cold down there, but there's not a whole lot left when you compare it to the pictures that you see online of this place. But apparently in the winter months, this place is beautiful. So I think that I'm going to have to have a return trip with the family to go and explore this at a later date. Yeah, that is like a chunk of ice down there, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a crystal geo or something. Interesting. Well, we found the ice. I think I'm good. I had my fill. <laughs> Thank you. 
over there. <laughs> I bet I blew an oil cooler line or something. There's no, I bet you there's no oil on that transmission. Holy cow. Well. First thing you do if you cover your exhaust with transmission fluid is get a fire extinguisher. So I'm gonna do that right now. A lot of people don't know this. Automatic transmission fluid is actually pretty flammable. If your exhaust is hot enough, it will light right up. This is going to be super hard for you to see, but if you look down in there, we have got a blown trans cooler line. It's either the line or it's the cooler itself, but either way, it's a mess. There is ATF everywhere, and so the transmission stopped working going down that hill because uh, it didn't have any oil, so it couldn't make any pressure. This is just the reality of owning a old SUV. So. <laughs> probably original part it's like 200 plus thousand miles on this thing and I uh, I don't know I, I don't want to work on it here and we're only like an hour and a half or so from my house and I have a truck and trailer so I think instead of me tearing apart the radiator and pulling all that stuff out to figure out what's wrong it's probably smarter for me to just go home get the truck and trailer call this one an L and uh, tear into it when I get in the shop. All right, Mr. Welcome Ed. back. Yeah, man. What's the plan? The plan is, is uh, you got a rig that's gonna take this vehicle on the bed and then I guess we're just gonna still camp. We're still camping, right? If we're still camping, I'm still camping. I'm in, dude. Let's do it. Nobody, including me, likes to have car problems, whether it's on the highway or you're stuck up in the woods with your friends. But the question is, how can you adapt and overcome? How do you make the best of a bad situation? The whole reason that I own this tow truck and trailer is so I have some flexibility. I can recover myself. It doesn't cost me a ton of money to go get it. And in this case, it's gonna save our trip. We're gonna drive back up the BDR an hour to a camping spot that we saw. We're gonna set up our tents. Riley has a projector. We're gonna drink. We're gonna watch movies. We're gonna laugh. And we're gonna do what we came here to do. We're gonna have fun with friends out in the middle of nowhere. Listen to the birds outside my window. I say, Lord, put a They ain't blue, still they can't sing. 